Hey folks, Dave back here on a rainy morning, bringing to you another basketball game. This is a game I've been teasing a little bit on the Digital to Dice podcast, as well as some of my live streams, but I didn't want to mention it uh, exactly until I got the game in my hands, okay? Because when I went to the website, it looked like a great game. Uh, I sent them an order. I didn't hear back for a few days, so I didn't know if they were either A, out of business, or I think they're in Italy, so maybe... They weren't doing very well, but uh, it took three or four days. I finally got a response from them. They apologized for the delay, and I got the game. So now I do want to talk about it because it's all legit, and, uh, and I'm pretty impressed with what I got so far. So the game is regular season basketball, and the website is here on the screen, www.rsbasketball.gym, J-I-M, dofree.com. So they must be using some kind of a Jim do free website or something, but wh whichever it is. Uh, so that's where you would find the game. They have a free demo, so you can print out the rules and a couple of teams and get, get going. So that's what I did, and I liked what I saw. And I placed my order, and it did take a few days, but I got my order in. I got the 83-84 season, so I could play Larry Bird and the Celtics. So there's a lot to get in here. Okay, first things first, my disclaimer. My disclaimer, I am not affiliated with this game. This is not meant as a tutorial to play this game. I may make mistakes in this game. Um... All that being said, you should have a pretty good idea on how this game plays by watching this video, but by no means am I an expert and in, in no means trying to sell this game for my personal game. All that being said, let's jump into this. So there's two ways to play this game. Uh, the basic mode, which just keeps the score, and then your advanced mode, which keeps all your stats. And I should probably say there's probably a super advanced mode as well because the stat keeping... It's huge. You can keep everything for stats. If you're a basketball guy and you like basketball stats, everything is in here with just a couple rolls of the dice, okay? You can keep track of, you know, how many minutes they played along with their points. And, and uh, it just, uh, just a little bit of everything. It really does. There's a lot in this game as far as stat keeping goes. But let's start with the basic game, okay? So what you do first is a little bit of math in the beginning. What you do, each team has a, an offense and a defense rating, okay, for a home and away. So you would take, if so Philadelphia is on the road, I would take their road offense, which is minus 7, and the Boston defense at home is minus 4. So I got a minus 7 offense on the road versus the home team defense is minus 4. That gives me minus 11. So the first thing you do for Philadelphia is put in minus 11 points in the mod table over here. Okay, and they, you can put them whatever you want. They suggest to put them in the fourth quarter because that's when the home field advantage comes in, but you can put them anywhere as long as you don't go any more than minus two in a particular column. So I just spread it out that I, I took minus two, a couple in the first quarter, a couple in the second quarter, and then one each in the, in the third and the fourth quarter, and that gives me my minus 11. The Celtics, however, at home, they are a plus two, and the road defense for Philadelphia is a minus four. So that works out to minus two. So what I did is right off the bat, I took the penalty for the Celtics right in the first play of the game. And from there on in, there's no more modifications. It is possible to get a positive modification depending on the teams you're playing as well. But keep in mind, you can't put any more than a minus two in one column. You can't put a plus two and then a minus two later to even it out. It's just you add up to your plus or minus number. And that's all you can do. So it gets real simple here. You roll two dice. You have a, uh, and you need two different colored dice. So let's just say here we rolled a 43. Okay. There's no modification. So that's seven points for the 76ers. And what I did here is in this spreadsheet, I'm kind of proud of this spreadsheet that I did here because I'm not very good with Excel. But what I did is I have running totals for the first quarter the second quarter, the third quarter, and then the final. So as I put in my points here, it tells me what my first quarter points, um, yeah, and then second, third, and fourth, so I can keep track of what's going on. I'll show you a little bit about that later. So four, three, seven points for the sixes. The Celtics roll. They roll a 23. Now they subtract two, so five minus two, so they only scored three. So how this game plays out, it plays in three-minute segments. It's not a just a roll for final score, but it's not play-by-play -play either. It's kind of in the middle of all that, and I really like that. And remember I talked about shootout hockey, how that plays similar? Yeah, this has a very shootout hockey uh, feel to it. So as you can see, first quarter, it's seven to three. 
of all the sixes. So now let's just say they roll a 55. So that's 10, but we minus 2, so that gives them 8. So now they're up 15 to 3 with a Celtics roll. Now the Celtics roll, let's just say they roll a 62. So that's 8 for the Celtics, okay? So after two rolls, it's 15, 11, 76s. 76 76s 76 roll, let's say they get a bad roll. They roll a 12. So it's 3 minus 2. That only gives them 1. And then the Celtics roll. Let's just say they roll a 34. So that gives them 7. So now we go to the end of the first quarter. And the final roll will be a 35. That gives them 8. And so that's the end for the Sixers. And then the Celtics, let's just say they roll a 32. For five. So that's where we are at the end of the first quarter. So you can see all my dice rolls with my modifications. I have to do the modifications by by hand. Uh, but I have the formula come out. So it's 24 to 23 after the first quarter. Now, when I go over here, let's just say I go to here. So 8 minus 1 is 7. And then I get the Celtics. Let's say they rolled 44 2 for 8. So as you can see in my spreadsheet here, I kept the first quarter. That tells you what the first quarter score was. So now this keeps tallying the second quarter and then the third and then the final. So these are running tallies until I surpass that quarter. So if I want to go back and say, hey, the Sixers led 24-23 after one, okay, you see how that goes. So you would just continue on until you got to the end, and then you get the final score. So that is the quick way, play, uh, way to play. So you get four rolls per team per quarter, and you just have to factor in the, the, the modification number here, and that would get you your final score. Overtime plays the same way. You would do a roll and see what you got. And there's no modifications in overtime, by the way. So that is the basic mode. Let's clear this out. Okay, so we're back to zero. So now we're going to play with some stats. And again, you can keep as many stats as you want. I will say they do a really good job of explaining how to keep the stats and the instructions, okay? I've played a little bit, and I make a couple mistakes, and I go back and I read it, and I fix a few things, and then I go back and I fix a few things. And so it, it makes sense. You, do, you probably want to play a little bit and then go back into the instructions and figure out what you did wrong. Um, so, but... All the stats are there if you want, or you can get as crazy as you want. I probably, when I get going, will just keep track of points. I'm really not too concerned about minutes played. I'm not really too concerned about rebounds or assists. I just want to, you know, if, if Bird has a good game or Dr. J has a good game, I want to just talk about that. So, so here's an example of the game that I played. And you can see that, you know, it was a final score of 109 to 108. Boston, on the last roll, I needed four points to tie and I rolled five to win. So I won by 109, 108. You can see that I, I sorted everybody here by points. I even did the assists and the rebounds. I did screw up on the assists, though. I will say when I went back and read on the, re I mean, the rebounds I screwed up, is that you, start, you have to go back and artificially add rebounds depending on how many shots were missed by the other team and how many offensive rebounds they had. So again, you can really, really get into a lot of stat keeping. And that's where the time comes in. As you can see, when I did the, the quick dice roll, I was flying through the game. When you stop to do the stats, it takes longer. So depending on how many stats you want will determine how long the game is. For this game here, my first playthrough keeping field goals, free throws, three points, rebounds, and assists. The first half took me 27 minutes because I was stumbling my way through it. I got into a groove, and the second half only took me 15 minutes. So they say it takes 30 minutes to play a game with all the stats. I would say once you get going, you could do it in 30 minutes. However, after the fact, there's still some math you need to do if you want complete stats. So again, how, many, how much stats you want determines how much time you spend in each game. So, uh, so again, so in my game here, Irving had 30 points. He was 14 for 26. In field goals, he was 2 for 3 for um, the free throw line. In um, Tony, he he had a, he was one for one for three point land, and there's a there's a three point rule in the older seasons, and that's all explained in the book too. Is where you can only keep track of three point shots on the final roll of each quarter because they weren't used as much back then. So the newer seasons are different, and that's all in the rule book too. And it took me a minute, but it did make sense when I when I read the rule book there. So um. You just got to read the rules and just focus on it. It all makes sense. I'm not a basketball guy, and it made sense to me. For, for the Celtics, Michaela, 25. Parrish with 20. Bird, 7 for 18 shooting. He did not have a good day, good game shooting from the field. And he was 0 for 2 with 3 points. Uh, so you can see the stats that I kept. It was kind of fun. I, I really did kind of enjoy that. So anyway, so back to the game at hand. 
And so we're going to start keeping some stats. And I'm going to show you how that works. So let me show you the score sheet first, okay? So this is the Celtics, the 83-84 Celtics. And at the top, man, we talked about offense and defense. So the home offense is plus two, and the home defense is minus four. So this is what we use for the Celtics today. And they also have road offense and defense. Uh, the pace and the CGF, the pace, that comes into effect uh, at the end when you can factor in uh, rebounds and the whole bit. So the pace, if you want to really get crazy, at the end of the game, you do some math, the pace factors in, it's all in the rule book, and you can figure out more stats. CGF is close game factor. I did not use that in my game, and it just, what it is at the end of the game, you take a look at the Celtics close game factor and the 76ers close game factor, if those are the teams you're playing, and then... In the final roll of the game, you might add or subtract points from a team because one team is better at the close of the game than the other. I did not use that, but it's another layer of um, advanced rules that you can use in this game. So let's take a look at the dice roll here. So if I roll a 1-1, one, one, it tells you what happened. So this is how you keep the stats. So Mikhail went 0 for 3. And this is a three-minute segment of the game. Okay, remember, we're rolling three minutes at a time. And let me take the camera off so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so, and we go back like that. Okay, so the camera comes off. Let me see if I can go fit to page again. There we go. So, hopefully we're still recording here. And so you see that Mikhail would be 0 for 3. Bird is 1 for 3. So that would account for the two points. You follow, you got 1 and 1 is two points, so Bird is one for three, so he got the two points. Maxwell was 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Quinn Buckner had an offensive rebound, and Parrish had a defensive rebound. So that's how you would read a 1-1 one, one roll if you were keeping stats. Um, see these colors here, the yellows and the greens? That's for your shot blocks and your steals. I didn't do that, but you can keep track of shot blocks and steals as well if you want to. It's all in there. Over here on the rest chart, if you want a random roster, your first roll of the game, no matter what it is, so you, you roll your dice, you factor in your points, you figure out your stats, you go to the rest shot on the first roll of the game, and that will tell you who's not playing. So if I roll that two, Parrish, Maxwell, and Clark are not playing. So I would put them in the gray area. So if I went back to my my score sheet there, um, it would I would go into my gray area and put them on there. So I would keep their stats, and in the rule book it tells you that you would put those stats on somebody else. And it, it, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. You just fill in the stats that they normally would get because they didn't play. And it also tells you on the side here that if they don't play, you have to subtract three points from the Celtics score because that's what the effect is, is that not these three players not playing would cost the team three points on average. So... The rule book, again, explains how you would subtract the three points. So, again, this really sounds complicated, but it's not. And you don't even have to use this, okay? If you want to put in your roster, you can put in your roster and not even worry about the rest shot. But if you want the randomness, it is there. So let me scroll down the bottom here, okay? So if I'm going, if I roll the 6-6, six, six, that's 12 points, it tells you how the 12 points happened. Parrish was 1 for 3. Larry Bird was 3 for 4. DJ was four for four from the free throw line. And then you got Parrish with offensive, two offensive rebounds, McHale with three defensive rebounds, DJ with two assists, and Bird with an assist. So it does show you on the roster how the points were accumulated. So that's what I really like about it. So you scored 12 points, and then you, that's how you factor it in. If you were subtracting points, okay? So let's just say you needed to subtract the two points on the modif modification rule. The rule book tells you what to do is in the second column here, you would take away a basket from Larry Bird because he's in the second column. So if you needed to subtract two points from the Celtics, Bird would go from three to four to two to four, and then that would give you 10 points instead of 12. And the same goes for three points in a whole bit. The rulebook does a really good job of explaining what to do if you need to modify a score by adding or subtracting. Uh, on the right-hand side, on the roster over here, if I look at the roster a little bit, it tells you their position, and it tells you the three-point thing. What that comes into play is that if somebody that's not in the game gets a three-pointer and you need to allocate that to somebody in the game, 
it tells you that these three, these four players cannot get a three-point shot, so you would go to the next person on the list. At minutes played, it gives you average minutes played, and then you can factor in where they're slotted on the score sheet to factor in their exact minutes, and then at the end, you can do a little bit of math if you wanted to keep minutes played. DQ is foul out, and there's a rule for that that you roll in the fourth quarter. If you roll doubles, then you check to see if a player could foul out in that fourth quarter at some point. I didn't play that way, but again, it's a lot of things that you can add to uh, the game. So now, let me go back to the game at hand here and show you how to do that. Okay, so hopefully I haven't confused you too much. It sounds complicated, but when you think about it, every roll of the dice, you look at that line and it tells you who scored. Okay, so let's start with the 76s. So I just to keep it simple, I roll a 1-1. One, one. 76s get two points. Okay, I look at the, the 76s chart, and it says Malone. And as you go across in the chart from left to right, you start writing on the score sheet. And that is important, too, to, as far as keeping stats and minutes played. So as you see the person, you write it down. You never write his name twice, but just follow along. So it says he was 0 for 1. Okay, Tony was one for three. So that accounts for the two points for that three-minute segment. Okay, offensive rebounds. Tony had an offensive rebound. And Irving had a defensive rebound, so I just put on the rebounds. There were no assists. So as you find the names on the score sheet, you write them in. Okay, so now the Celtics, just to keep it simple, let's go to the 6-6 six, six, we just talked about so we can go over all that. So the Celtics roll 12 minus the 2 is 10. So the Celtics are leading 10-2 to two after the first three minutes. Well, the first name I encounter is Parrish. I write Parrish in. He is 1 for 3. Okay. Bird. Now, it says Bird is 3 for 4, but we have this minus two modification here. We have to factor that in by taking a basket away from Bird. So Bird is now two for four. DJ was four for four at the free throw line. Again, this is my this is my homemade score sheet here. You can use uh, your. I'll get into score sheets in a minute, but this is my score sheet here. So DJ is four for four from the line. Parish had an offensive rebound. McHale, and again, see how I'm writing in the names as I come across them, he had a defensive rebound. And then DJ had two assists, and Bird had one assist. So all that took place in that first three minutes. Okay, so the Celtics lead 10-2. to two. Tony hit the only field goal for the 76ers. Parrish and Bird each scored. DJ was 4-for-4 four four from the free throw line. And that's how you would play it out. Okay? So, as you play it yourself, it does make a lot of sense. So, let's let's go to the next roll. Okay? Just to kind of continue on one more roll. Okay? So, let's just say now I roll. I want to get some other people involved here. Okay. So, let's just say I roll 66 now for the visitors. So, 12 Minus the two modification, that gives them 10 points, okay? So now, Irving was three for five. Tony was two for three, but we need to subtract a basket from the second column. He is second column. So instead of two for three, he is one for three. Now I encounter a new name, Ivoroni. Ivoroni was two for two from the free throw line. My offensive rebounds, Irving had two. So that gives him three. Ivoroni, the new guy, had two. Cheeks is a new guy. Maurice Cheeks, I need to add him to the list, okay? Maurice Cheeks had three assists on that segment, and Ivoroni had one assist on that segment. So you can see, as you come across names not on your list, you add them here. I, I limit it to 10 players I don't play many more than 10. So once I get my first 10, that's it. And anybody else goes down here in the gray. So let's just say that um, Williams 
was not playing for the 76ers, okay? And he went one for one on one of the segments, okay? What the rule book tells you to do is at the end of the quarter is go back and allocate these points to people that are in the game starting at the top. And that's why it's important to put in the players as you come across them on the score sheet. So at the end of the first quarter, let's say, I get Williams, who's not in the game. We've determined that for one reason or another, whether we use the rest chart or whether we just decided he was not playing in the game, he ended up on, on our score sheet. He ended up getting a, a basket. So we're going to, at the end of the quarter, we're going to allocate that to somebody else. So it says start at the top and work your way down. So we're going to go Malone. He's going to be... One for two now, and we take this away from Williams. Okay? So that's how you would allocate the stats. And again, all in the rule book, it makes sense as you're playing it. So, yeah, so there's a lot here. If you really want to go through the stats, there really is. There's a lot of meat on this bone if you like basketball stats. So you can play the basic mode and just pump out your final score, or you can keep as crazy as stats as you want. And that's what I really like about this game is that you could do whatever you want to do. You could set your own lineup or you can have the rest chart determine who's not playing. You can use the close game factor at the end of the game if you want or not. You can keep just points. You can keep, um, you know, just rebounds, assists, whatever you want to do. You don't have to keep rebounds. You don't have to keep assists, you know. You don't have to keep time if, unless you want to. You don't have to have, check if people foul out. But it's all there if you want to use it. So it's kind of like, here's, the, here's the, the buffet. You could pick and choose whatever you want, and it won't affect the game whatsoever. Because you have your final score. You know what the final score is. It's just, as far as the stats go, you put in as many stats as you want. So, the, okay. So the, the positives of this game. I like that you can play the quick play mode. And in just a few minutes and get your final score. And it's I like rolling dice, so 16 dice rolls is really fun. Because as you can see in, in my example, in the game that I played, it went down to the final roll. I mean, look, look at the Celtics rolling 2-1, 2-3, 1-3, 3-2. One, two, three, one, three, three, two. They were terrible. They were down by 15 points at, at the half. And then they came back. And now Philadelphia is rolling low. And Celtics, look, 11, 10, 9, 11. They had a huge third quarter. And that was fun to see. And then it come down to the last roll. And I snuck out with a one-point win for the Celtics. So even the basic mode is really fun, especially when you factor in the modification points. Because that really it gives you the home court advantage. It really does. I, I decided to keep stats just to see how fun it would be. Now I know I'm not going to go crazy with the stats. I will keep track of um, the points. I don't think I'll I'll do rebounds or assists. I might because the rebounds were wrong, as I said, because you really have to go back in and factor how many shots were taken and the whole bit. So casual basketball fan, I think I'm just going to keep track of who got the points, okay? So the positives are basic game plays fast and easy. The advanced game can be advanced or super advanced or mega advanced to keep stats as you want it to be. It really all comes down to what you want for stats. My one complaint about the game is the actual score sheet itself. So they give you a couple of score sheets. As you can see this one here, I, I tried to play this on a table, tabletop, but just rolling the dice and... I couldn't do it because the, see how the score sheet here is. So you would, and the visitors, you would have to put, you know, uh, Irving, let's say. And that little box here, you would keep track of everything he did in the first quarter. So that would be, you know, he was, you know, his first roll, he was 0 for 1. And then he was like 2 for 2. Oh, but he had a three-pointer. Then he had uh, free throws. There's no way I could keep track of all that in in here. I just couldn't do it. So you would have to have some sort of a cheat sheet off the side, keep all your stats, and then write it in after the fact. So it, so you really need to do it that way because I, I couldn't get everything in here as far as stats. So you would – and see how, see how it's got the plus 8, plus 6, plus 4? It's really important that you add the people as you see them in the game in order because if you're factoring in points, they get the most points allocated to them. Uh, in case somebody here in the gray area has points that they they can't use. And also this plus 8, plus 6, plus 4, that you add that to the minutes played. So obviously the first guy is going to play the most minutes and then a little bit less, a little bit less. And then down here you start subtracting minutes. So you might have somebody that averages you know 15 minutes a game, but you have to subtract 10 from him so he only played 5 minutes if you want to do minutes played. So it's 
all in here. But my one complaint is the score sheet, it just doesn't give you enough room to put in everything. So that's why I decided to play on the computer, and I put in my own chart here. So I don't keep track by quarter. I just go by game. But for me, this is what I wanted to do. It keeps track of my total points, and then I can keep track of some other, other um, stats if I want to. So my one complaint is the score sheet. If you're trying to play on the table, the score sheet... You can use that to fill in the stuff, but you need to keep a scrap pad off the side to, to keep track of the stats because it's just too small. So that would be my one complaint about the game is I couldn't really play it on the tabletop without a scrap sheet. But all in all, uh, this game here, regular season basketball, rsbasketball.jimdofree.com, uh, fun game. Fun game. I'm not even a basketball guy, but I do like my old Celtic seasons. And so 83-84, Sixers Celtics, I had some fun with. And uh, you do need to read the directions a few times. It's not hard, but there's a lot. There's a lot in this. It makes sense. Trust me. This might sound like a complete cluster. It really makes sense when you're doing it. And if you get stuck, you say, okay, what do I do here? How, who do I subtract this from? I got a minus two over here, right? Minus two. Who do I subtract it from? It you go in the it tells you second column every time. So then now you know second column you subtract the basket. Sometimes you might have to subtract the free throw to, to to get it to come out. So what you're trying to do is your dice roll minus your modification gives you the points for those three minutes, and then you allocate those three points. Uh, those what, what would be ten points. So those ten points you need to allocate those, and that's all it is. So anyway, so that's a look at regular season basketball. I do recommend it. If, if you're a basketball guy and you like stats, you're going to love it. But if you just want to roll some dice too, it's, it's fun as well. So I'm Dave. I hope you liked this video, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.